guys, Ron here, and welcome back to the series in which I document my walks around the world and create a few Pokemon based on what I see on my walk. As I stroll, I usually point out all the neat stuff I see that could make for some creative new Pokemon designs, and then we'll put them together and draw some cool Pokemon. So I hope you follow along and leave a like so I know you want more of these, and make sure to check out the previous episode in which I make Pokemon from my winter by clicking the card on the top right corner. Little known fact, I actually post final versions of these Pokemon and sneak peeks on my Instagram and Twitter, both of which are in the description. But for now, let's focus on today's walk. So as you may or may not know, going places hasn't been an option lately, but back in January before the pandemic, my family and I went to our first actual vacation in almost like 10 years. We went to Disney World and I thought I'd be able to find a couple of things over there that would inspire some Pokemon creations. Know that I'm not going to make any Pokemon based on Disney characters or properties. I'm going to take inspiration, like always, from things that can be found in various cultures and even animals we see. The best place to find those animals are in Animal Kingdom. Now, we entered on a pretty cold and dank day, and not, not, the, not the good kind of dank. So not all the animals were available. Kind of a waste of a day, but at least we get to make this video. We did see a couple of animals, but I'm going to only show the ones that I can turn into a Pokemon. I didn't film the ones that already have inspired a bunch of Pokemon already. As we began our safari tour, the first animal we saw was a female forest antelope. Less interesting without horns. We see some vultures eating dead skin and algae off some hippos. Maybe an actual water type hippo is an option. I would love to make a giraffe Pokemon with an actual long neck. This may be my only opportunity. What else am I going to see a giraffe? The rest of the animals on the safari like lions and elephants were either too far to film or ones that I wanted to savor without filming. Now in the middle of this park is the tree of life. I would love to have a location like this in the Pokemon world. The tree itself doesn't give me ideas for a Pokemon, but all the carved animals do. Perhaps a grass or rock type that hibernates by becoming one with nature. Regardless, this thing is pretty epic. I think the colors of these macaws are some of the prettiest in the animal kingdom. I would love to make a Pokemon with that much color. I'm totally down to make a naked mole rat Pokemon, but I don't want it to be a straight up naked mole rat. Now, like I said, a lot of the other exhibits were closed due to the weather and I can't film rides. So how about we move on to day two? a much better experience and one that'll help inspire all the Pokemon I create in this video. Epcot is basically a world's fair. Half of the park is based on technology, biology, and the future, while the other half is a trip around the world with different sections that look like different countries. When we entered, we first experienced the future world attractions, but the first biological things worth filming for this video was after the Finding Nemo ride. They had this rad aquarium with basically any sea creature you can think of that could be placed in a tank. More seahorse Pokemon wouldn't be bad. Is this a snipefish? I think so. We have no shrimp Pokemon, and spoilers, I don't go with that idea, but now that I think of it, that would have been cool. There are eel Pokemon, but you can always be original with an eel. What kind of fish are these? I, I didn't catch its name. I see the blue tang in the back, but these are more interesting. A clownfish that is a literal clown isn't a bad idea. This ray is odd looking, I, I dig it. Now that fish is a character. A manatee Pokemon wouldn't be half bad. Kind of like Dugong, but chubbier. We already made a hermit crab Pokemon a few episodes ago. Now I may be wrong, but this is what I'm now assuming is a type of lionfish. Lionfish are actually known for their venomous spikes, so we have an animal here with actual abilities that can translate into a Pokemon. I think I'm gonna take it literally. I will make a fish that has lion-like features. It's still a fish though. Let's do it. I'm just gonna make a super rough sketch of the proportions of a lionfish. I'll make a pretty simple fish and introduce lion elements, I, I guess. Starting with a more mammalian set of eyes and a snout. Now it'll look weird cause it'll have a front facing face like a predatory mammal, but that's the point. A mane is gonna have to be included for it to resemble a lion. But throughout the video, I'll be going back and forth between feline-like and too aquatic-like. I guess the whole rule is that it's still a fish, but not an actual lion with a fish body. Maybe giving it a more feral mouth would make it fish-like? Now, I'm gonna try to make it uh, as spiky as possible, but we still have to introduce lines and patterns. After all, that's the number one aspect to a lionfish, also known as a zebrafish. Eyeshadows make it look more regal, and I'll struggle with the amount of stripes throughout the entire creation process. I'm gonna start taking inspiration from tigers at this point. But that's just a sloppy first draft, just so we have a concept going. I want the face to be less long since a long face isn't very fish-like. I'm gonna make it more cohesive this time and try to make the head flow into the body better. I think it's much more interesting if it had lines and spikes that contrasted with the flowy and round tail and fins, like an actual lionfish. I think it's time to introduce all the patterns just so we know it works, but let's finish the face. We need to nail it. I'll give him actual irises and maybe ink in the lines so you know that they're actual patterns. I think the teeth are also going to be patterns on his face instead of actual teeth protruding out. That way it'll have stripes on his face like a lionfish. Now I'm introducing more patterns and finalizing its nose. I'm making the mane way more seamless so it doesn't look like a straight up mane, but rather spikes on the face like the spikes on a lionfish. 
it'll look much more cohesive in color, but let's design the pre-evolved form first. So it turns out that some baby lionfish have giant fins with tiny bodies, almost like a mane or the coronas of a sun. So my Pokemon won't have a mane, just like a lion cub, but its fins will be mane-like and intimidating. So its spikes are also going to be very small and underdeveloped, it's going to be as cute as possible, and I'll give it some spikes that resemble cat ears, some patterns, and making the design a bit bold. And I've decided to give it a scary face on its fins that ward off predators, like a masquerade. But it will take some time to get it perfectly right. I thought that face was too mammalian-like, so I took out the cute nose in the final design and gave it lips like an actual fish. Still cute though. Here they are. Oshion, from Ocean, Lion, and Poison, evolves into Toroisin, from the genus of Lionfish, Terrible, and Poison. The little one has Intimidate as its ability, while the evolved form has Poison Point and Poison Touch as its ability, with the hidden ability Intimidate. Oshion's poison isn't fully developed, so it intimidates foes with its large fins. It's extremely confident and likes to be social. Toroisin, on the other hand, likes to be alone and is very aggressive when endangered. It's pretty territorial and can learn a bunch of fire type moves, which coincide with the lionfish's other name, the firefish. Now it's time to go around the world. The Canada section was actually very beautiful, with tons of flowers and a waterfall, a tiki Pokemon is an option. I must say I love how authentic the architecture is in each section. I felt like I was in Galar while walking through England, and after my brother fed a couple of birds, some fish and chips, we entered France. Very Cologian. But Morocco was the most underrated. I didn't expect much, but it really felt like I was in a Moroccan bazaar, and the Islamic patterns and designs would be pretty unique in the Pokemon world. It was super cozy though. Obviously Japan was my favorite section. We knew we'd love it, but didn't realize until we got there that it objectively had the most things to see and buy. It was jam-packed with Japanese media and memorabilia. Unfortunately almost everything there already had a Pokemon based on it. It really just feels like I'm in Johto right now. An Ibis Pokemon would be realistic. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Italy was nice for the architecture and food. Not like I ate any. Germany was actually pretty cool. It felt comfy like a fairy tale. China felt like Ba Sing Se. It was crazy. Definitely a place I considered getting food at. Super colorful too. It was fun looking at the Norse mythological tapestry in Norway, but it turns out Mexico was the place in which we would find our inspiration. It was cool seeing an Aztec pyramid in person, and I've been wanting to make a Mesoamerican inspired Pokemon for some time. We entered the pyramid in which I saw some alebrije, which are these brightly colored Mexican figurines of fantastical creatures, most of which are mixtures of multiple animals. The creator of this style of art was actually inspired by creatures he saw in his dream while very ill. So why not make a mythical Pokemon that could enter dreams? It'll have a cute little form that lives in the real world and a huge powerful form when it enters dreams. That's a great idea for a mythical, you gotta admit. And it would give us an opportunity to take various elements from animals we saw on our trip and combine them. That's the theme of this video, combinations. The conscious form will be primarily a cross between a dog and a cat with bunny or even fox ears. It's just going to be a vague animal with various other features like tiny wings and a lizard tail. Its hind legs will be from a deer while its front legs will be feline-esque. At least designed after the paws of a cat Pokemon like Toracat or Luxio. Its chest is strong and it's very playful. Definitely a fun Pokemon to have around. It'll have tiny horns that grow in its dream form, also showing its mischievous side. It'll have a bit of eyeliner and cat's eyes, just balancing the proportions and painting eyeliner like many Alabrijas have, and adding the first of many patterns, finishing the silhouette, elongating the neck a bit, and now starting to add body parts influenced by other animals, but the main event is now in full swing. We gotta give this thing what it was made to have, crazy patterns, but I'm not gonna go overboard, cause it won't look like a Pokemon if the patterns were too all over the place. They are still going to be based on simple shapes, and when I color it, the colors will be primary and cohesive. Here I'm introducing some patterns inspired by the giraffes I saw. The face is now more interesting with lines separating the snout. And time for the dream form. It'll have the face and body of a panther with all the other features like its conscious form has, just more developed. Originally its front legs were very gorilla-like, but that changes later. Let's add shapes and vague features. Really looks like a demonic creature, but it's not. Shortening the neck and making its wings big, but not too big. After all, it doesn't have to be actually anatomically correct, because it flies with fairy and ghost magic, making the horns more ox-like and the ears very goat-like at this point, finally finalizing the front and back legs and beginning to add separation. 
The rest is pretty straightforward, just adding patterns, most of which are the same exact ones on its other form, except for the chest and stomach. But the real difference is the colors. When you'll see them, you'll notice that the dream form is more vibrant, with a dark face and abdomen. Here it is. The mythical Pokemon, Halebrije, from Hallucination and Alebrije. In its physical form, it's a fairy type with the ability Pixelate and the hidden ability Pastel Veil. Whenever the foe is asleep, it transforms into its dream state and becomes stronger and gains a ghost typing, also gaining the ability Sweet Dreams, which prolongs sleep. It doesn't double the time it sleeps, but doubles the chances of the foe staying asleep. It has two new signature moves, Hallucination, which confuses the foe in one turn and then puts it to sleep the next, like a more useful yawn, and then Paint Slash. It's a powerful physical fairy move with 100 base power that also changes the Pokemon's type to a different type based on the berry that Halebrije is holding. I think it's a fun Pokemon in every aspect. Its design, concept, origin, moves, and appeal are all enjoyable. One of my favorite Pokemon I've ever made, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. If so, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys very soon.